All right, everybody, here we go. We're back at it on the channel again. We're doing another breakdown. This time we're looking at Homecoming. Homecoming, beautiful looking show. Crazy camera moves. We've got, uh, what's her name? Cindy Crawford, a.k.a. Julia Roberts. They're two different people. Julia Roberts is actually in Homecoming. Cindy Crawford is not. So uh, that's what we're looking at. Why are we looking at this, you ask? Why would we take time out of our day to care about this specific scene or about this specific setup? It's because... You often hear the phrase, light the space, right? That's the new way to do cinematography. You don't want to get bogged down in doing individual shots and lighting them. It gets tricky to match and remember what you did, and it starts to feel really inconsistent. So what's the solution? Light the space one time. Okay, I can light a space to make it look really nice, but what if I get in there and I place the people in just random areas inside of that room? Is that going to look good? Maybe. Is it going to look as good as it possibly could if I placed everyone exactly in the best spots inside of the room? No. So what should you do? You should definitely light the space and definitely tell everyone that you only operate on set by lighting the spaces. You do not light faces. You only light spaces because that's what cool people do. So you want to tell everyone that already. After you've told them that and you actually do it on set on the day, then guess what? You need to use, move around the little pieces on the chessboard to move them into the best areas if you light the space because you can have a beautifully lit space and you can place the talent in the wrong spot which then means the camera has to go in an even worse spot, and then it all looks horrendous. So we're trying to avoid that. And that is exactly what they do in this little snippet from our homecoming breakdown. You don't believe me? Let's watch. The opening of the entire series. We go from the fish. Yes. Down the techno. Tilting. Where is our lady? Soft hob. Show, show. Slash of sun. That's good. Oh no, that means the window's gonna be right behind her. What are we gonna do? Oh, I see what you did. Put the window above her head. She stands up, barely clips the VFX windows, comes around. Actually, let's pause it there. We won't pause it. We won't even get bigger. Let's get bigger. And it's frozen. Don't get in front of that VFX. Ooh, just. Just don't step in front of the green screen. Look at all that. Noise as well. Crazy, crazy, crazy amounts of noise. Or grain as we're calling it these days. Just edging them out just a little bit. Okay, we got some top light over here. We've got soft hob in the background for the backlight plus over here. Two pracks. And he's getting hit with something from above. She's getting hit from something from over here. And we're about to fly out the door. Oh, I like that dirt on the VFX just to make it seem... Oh, yeah, that seems legit. And now, where did all the sun that was pouring in go? It's backlit. Okay, let's just roll back here. We will take a little look at this opening scene here. So, just for office setup, what are we looking at here? This is smart. Obviously, if we're going to build it to the shots that we need... We're going to do our best to make it nice and easy for lighting. What you can do in a studio is you can have the whole grid up here, right? All up here are the lights. Then you can use a grid on top of the lights to keep it very focused and contained, which means you're not bashing light up against the walls. Now, shears, white shears in an office environment is strange, but makes sense in the movie world. So we've got shears plus dark wood plus practicals that are slightly different colors to make it all beautiful, right? Now, this is the, usually when we talk about desks in an office, right, this would be the hardest way to do it. They've done something really clever, which we're going to see later on, which is the height of this window. Basically, when someone sits down here and sits here, it makes the window uh, basically a non-factor when we're looking this way, right? We don't have to control for the outside, even though it's green screen anyway. We don't have to control for that area. So it basically gets us a free top light. I haven't seen this before, and I imagine this is only because uh, we are on a stage and we built this exactly to our requirements because if you were in an office and you were sitting down here, you would want the window somewhere where you could see out, I would imagine. So you'd probably want it a little bit bigger, but that's just me. So you can do lots and lots of things here with a room tone. So this is all about room tone. Like, what do we need coming down on top of this? You can see in the water bottle itself, the reflections. But we're establishing a line. We've made a big move in. We're shooting on the dark side, right? 
shooting into that, into the corner of the room as well. Everything is lining up here for framework. That's why it looks so dark. That's why it feels so moody. And the question is now, do you do this with two lights, right? So you have one hitting here and one hitting her. My guess is yes. That's going to be done with two lights. And you've got another one over here hitting this shadow on the ground. And you've got the softer unit, again, keeping off the walls. See how this, they're not lit up up here, yet this is there's just a pool of light over here, just an ambient little pool, which is very nice. And you see how harsh the lighting is on her because it's got to be so far away, right? You're not going to do a beauty medium close up with this harsh of lighting here and that dark of lighting there. So it's just because of the way that the camera is moving and the, the width of the shot. Okay, now there's a whole bunch of funky aspect ratios in here. This is what you call uh, outside hot, inside not. This is about as crazy as I would imagine that you want to get. It's quite hot outside. Why doesn't this thing ever just go first? Why does it take so long? Okay, we come through. Whoops, let's see where we open up. Now, notice as we are watching this thing, right? So this is the L of the room. This is providing all the depth. And the action is mainly going to play out over here. What window do we never see out of this whole time? Just wait for it and watch. And you can see the craziness of the lenses, the aberrations on the lenses up the top with the practicals on. But you are pumping so much level this way. Even with it that hot outside, you're still pumping in tons and tons and tons of level and so much haze, right? You got haze over here. Look, these people, so they're still smoking heaters inside. Wherever this is, somebody is lighting up. And that is dark, ladies and gentlemen. This is not Pantene. This is not a shampoo ad for Julia Roberts here. This is dark. And now there's no light coming in this way, which let's, for our sake, let's say there's just a wall here that somehow is blocking all of the, the light that is hitting her over there. All right, so we play it this way. Nice, dark, down, slightly different color, but looking good. Again, camera moving perfectly steady and ta-da. Okay, so we got this back and forth between these two here. What we're gonna look at, again, is because of the crazy framing, all right? Just imagine you could see this much more of the frame, like it was the anamorphic that is the rest of this thing. Uh, you're going to see this window that is going to be nuclear because we're pushing it all through here to get this level of softness. We got to have the diffusion basically right up against the window. And then the darkness here comes from the difference between level out here and level in here. All right, so this is one of those ones where really, really difficult to get this much contrast inside a space, even a space as dark as this, if you don't have big, powerful lights, right? Because you have to separate those values. And the only way you separate those values is by blasting a shit ton in here and then not letting it return. Okay, because if you only push through a little bit, like if this is a little M18, uh, you're going to have to open up on exposure so much that all back here is going to turn all flat because all of the ambient that is leaking in from everywhere else is going to ruin all of your mood. So if you want this level of shadow inside an interior when there's this much light outside, be prepared to bring in the big guns. Okay, same here. Shoot window that you can't see. She's blocking where the light is actually coming from. We're playing the practical overhead. Um, we've seen this trick before. And then out the back, again, this is probably one that you would do at night, right? You could easily get away with this in the schedule doing it at nighttime rather than the day so you don't have to control anything. Boom. Okay. Now in this shot, what do we do when we go in for the close-up versus this shot? All right, let's see. Here, when she's looking at him, oh, we don't really see it there. In the next shot, please. Yeah. Okay. See the harshness over here? Now, why is the harshness over there and why is it so dark? Because we can only get so close with the diffusion. Now watch when we jump in. Here, same thing. The sit-stand. Always a tricky combination. The sit-stand. Like, whose eye level do you take? Now, she's clocked much more towards camera and we've softened up this shadow immensely. And now, in this situation, it's all about balancing this stuff back here with her face. Okay, so if this is location work, let's just imagine this is a real location, right? And you're pumping through the daylight here. Let's say you've got an M90 through a 4x frame of diffusion, then the 4x goes to a 12x. So by the time you get in here, right, with the um, M90, it, you, you've lost quite a bit of level, but you're still able, you got the neg over here, 
you're sucking up all this light over here, you're still able to get this level of softness and hold the outside day. Now you could do it that way, where you just had day coming in through here, but if you were scouting this location, you'd be like, okay, the problem is going to be that we're gonna be on this scene facing these windows for four hours by the time we get through all the coverage that we know that we're gonna need. If I'm talking to the director and we're saying, this is how many shots, this is what we're looking for, the back and forth coverage. So really what you want, you know, it looks like you want the sun over here backlighting, shining this way. But in reality, what you probably want is sun going this way and then giving you natural ambient day over here, which is less to compete with, then you fill in with your own lamps. So one lamp here, hit window. One lamp here, hit window. Because you got the diffusion on there, it doesn't really matter. You just have to light it up to make it seem like day. Okay, and normally, like I always say, normally the tell is it's fake movie light if it's overexposed. Right? Because in general, most cinematographers will try and save as much as they can out the window if it's real. If it's fake, they'll let it go. And you can see the difference there, the jump between, where's the close-up? Jump between the close-up, oh, come on, man. I need that jog wheel. I need the jog wheel. Show it to me. Same for him, right? It's a little bit soft there. Kind, oh, there he is in the background though. Did you see that in the background? This is important. Little trick. See this guy going out the back back here? Which door is he going out? He has been specifically instructed to exit that door. Why? Because if he pushes on the other door, we're going to see out and it's going to be a giant blown out blob of dog shit. But if he pushes the far side one and he only pushes it a little bit and sneaks out, see how you only ever see door? Something to think about when you are looking, when you are location scouting and there's people coming in and out of a location, which ways do the doors open up? Because we don't want that thing blowing out and becoming a big distraction. I mean, this is, again, this is bread and butter. Once you get done with that wide shot, you have these two mediums and then the two close-ups where here they've decided, okay, we're gonna play it at hip level for him, hip level of um, Julia Roberts. And then we're gonna go high for Julia Roberts. We're gonna go at shoulder level. These are those things you never really think about until you get out there. And you're like, we got a conversation between a guy sitting down and a woman standing up. What are we gonna do? Who's gonna be in charge? Who's gonna be the powerful one? And then everything plays in this little close-up here. We bump back out. Again, you still haven't, look at the light difference here on the shears. Stop, go back. Now we're not gonna pump light into all of these windows, right? We don't have enough, we don't have the fixtures, we don't have the time to set it all up, it's a pain in the ass. So what we're gonna do is shine the mid-ground one and our one that is gonna light everybody up in here, right? Those are the two that we can afford to have M90s through. And you can see by the shears, See how lit up the shear is here and see how down the shear is there, right? So that is natural ambient. This is bringing in our extra lamp. We're just pushing it in. And generally what you would do is because we don't want these people to be a distraction versus her, we're gonna play this a slightly thicker diffusion or just a smaller lamp, whatever you want to get less level. And we keep playing. I don't know if you can see the amount of film grain that they have added to this thing is crazy. Right, just a, a wild amount of film grain in this show. Just when you think, if you ever think, oh, I've gone too heavy on the film grain. No, you probably haven't. I told you. I told you that was going to be the case, that you light the space, and then you use the people to light the face. Right? You move them around to the best spot. If you don't know what the best spot is, you got a lot of videos to watch. Right? It's not hard to pick out patterns that emerge time and time again when you're in an interior situation. Where do people normally sit? Do they sit up against the wall? Would that be a good idea? No. No, that would be a terrible idea. Do they sit right next to the window? Do they have their back to the window? Do they... I don't know. I can't think of anything dumber. Really? I'm sure they're out there. I'm sure you guys have stories. Where's the dumbest place? Or the worst place? Rather than not, Let's not be mean to the people that are involved in making these films. Where's the worst place that you've ever been uh, on set and someone has decided this is where I'd like to do the scene from? My character would not stand over here. They'd stand here, upside down, in the corner of the room where there's no light because that's the way they feel. And they're probably going to put on glasses as well. Tell me in the comments below. I've got some bad ones. Uh, but I'm trying to think of the worst one. 
and I can't do it. That's good because I could probably blacked out at that point and then just uh, just stopped remembering whatever it is that I was doing and uh, was thinking about how I was going to spend my day off because I couldn't take it anymore with people standing in the worst possible spot. So nip that in the bud. Like get to that before they do. Light the space, of course, and then maybe just drop a little hint like, hey, you know, uh, Robert De Niro, he stands, he always likes to stand here in this spot. And you see people like, Robert stands there? Bob? Like, yeah, Bob, he stands like this all the time. Like, well, maybe you should stand like that too. You sort of look like Bob from the side. You've got that same charisma. Anyway, okay, that's going to do it for this one. Many thanks. We'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.